Hey guys, today I want to talk to you guys about a guy whom I truly respect. His name is Masayoshi Son, or Masa for short. He holds a world record for losing the most amount of money in a given year. He lost 70 billion dollars in one year during the late 1990s. He went from being a mere millionaire back to being a billionaire over the years. But again, I don't care about his money or his net fluctuation in wealth. It has nothing to do with me. It won't benefit my life in any way. I don't care about that. But the reason I respect Masayoshi Son is because he seems to possess in great quantities personality and character traits that I struggle with, namely perseverance and resilience. Perseverance is being steadfast, being able to stay the course no matter how hard or delayed the satisfaction or success may be. Resilience, on the other hand, is the measure of how quickly you can bounce back up from trauma or from trials or from, you know, any obstacle in your life. Masayoshi Son grew up in rural Japan to poor parents, namely poor Korean parents. And growing up in Japan to ethnically Korean parents, he had an identity crisis when he was a young child. And I had a similar identity crisis. I was an Asian American and I always had to struggle with my um, trying to choose sides, right? Like, am I more Asian? Am I more American? Right? At home, I would speak Korean, I would eat Korean food and live in this bubble of Korean culture. But when I go to school or when I go um, meet my friends, my teacher, I'm put in an American setting. Now, Masayoshi Son took this crisis as an opportunity to really examine who he was and how he wanted to portray his life to the outside world. He determined that there was no nation or ethnic group that can really define him. At such a young age, he discovered that he can only define himself, that he can, he can only be, he can only create his own culture. It is only now in my late 20s that I realized that's true. It was always about me creating my own culture and defining myself, viewing a variety of different cultures and choosing the best aspects of each culture and applying it to myself the ones that fit my personality. Another thing that I'm impressed by Masayoshi Son and that I admire him for is at the young age of 13 and 14, he secured a meeting with then president and CEO of McDonald's Japan. When you're 13 or 14 and you don't have connections, how would you secure a meeting with a CEO, let alone any large corporation that has thousands of employees? Why would he or she make time for you? And I'm willing to bet it was his consistent effort, persistence, and a little bit of luck that really played into securing a meeting with then president and CEO of McDonald's Japan, Dan Fujita. Dan Fujita gives Ma young Masa advice that marks a turning point in young Masa's life. Dan Fujita tells young Masa, go study English and go study computer science in the United States. And young Masa takes that advice and decides to go. It is only in my late 20s that I finally spoke to my parents about um, what I wanted to do with my life. And it was not working in a, uh, a job that I did not really like. The first thing my mom said to me was, um, how are you going to buy a house? Or my dad? And my dad was like, no, don't try to make any noise. Just get a quiet, good small job, live in a quiet part of the world, and live quietly. Because I respect my parents and love my parents, of course I want to please them, right? But I knew that I cannot do what they wanted me to do. To live quietly, and there's nothing wrong with that, but it's not just me, it's not me. But Masa did this at the age of 13 and 14. And from this, I take inspiration. Young Masa goes to the United States and he studies computer science. Now, um, he returns to Japan and finally gets an idea to create a company called SoftBank. A little after a year or his daughter was born, Masa became terribly ill. Now his doctor told him that um, he might not have long to live. Your daughter was just born. You wanted to build a company that represents your philosophy and you did. I bet there was nothing as emotionally challenging as him lying in that hospital bed knowing that everything he built and he ran towards, he's gonna lose. Not because someone tried to steal it from him, but because of his health. It is during this time, I think that Masayoshi really became Masayoshi 3.0. 2.0 would be when he met Dan Fujita and went to the United States. 
after gaining everything, he had to learn to let everything go. And he said that he no longer cared about SoftBank or corporation or money or fulfilling the truth. He just wanted to see his daughter smile. I really believe that someone who gained everything and loses everything really produces in them, especially someone like Masa, a different perspective. And when he was about to lose everything he had and loved, I think he start really appreciating it. He fortunately got his health back and he has been doing well. Having gone through all that, he's not afraid to just be himself and to express himself and define himself to the world. That is something I want to do and I'm working and striving towards. Thank you Masayoshi for being strong. Thank you Masayoshi for persevering and being resilient. And Masayoshi, if you're watching this, I hope you give me a call. I want to interview you personally on camera and really find out more about you. Thank you.